how do you actually create a humorous story? There are a few tips and tricks that will help you to create a funny and entertaining humorous story. You are looking very hard for a funny stories that happen in your life. Stop looking. Instead, try to recall any weird, stupid, or even frustrating situations that happened to you and turn it into a humorous story. I want to share with you 11 humorous tools that will help you to make your story funny and entertaining to others. Let's listen to a short humor story and then I will go over 11 humorous tools. For more videos, please like, subscribe to my channel. The title of the story is <laughs> The Evil Twin. Have you ever had a child or a grandchild that literally drew you nuts? Having a child can be a very overwhelming experience. But having a second child it can be a super duper overwhelming experience. About nine years ago, my 10-year-old son Eric was taking voice lesson at a private voice teacher in Chicago. She was teaching at her home voice studio. The voice teacher was a talented performing operatic soprano and had a happy, charismatic personality until her children were born. She said to us that she had twins. One twin was four-year-old and another twin, two-year-old. Wow! How interesting, I said. This means that one came out immediately and another persisted for two years. Being impressed with what I heard, I got some unhealthy images running through my head. When all twins finally came out, this life-changing event caused her to postpone her stage performances, and she started teaching as much as it was possible in her a very very, a very challenging situation. I must say that teacher's oldest twin, the one that was four-year-old, had an exceptional level streak for his age. His level streak was so pronounced that even my husband, with his tremendous sacrifice during the lesson, felt on the edge of glory when he had to babysit this evil twin during the longest one hour was lesson. After each singing, stinging lesson, I had to take something friendly to me, a few drops of valerian root tincture to calm me down while thinking of what Mother Teresa would say about this sweet evil thing, if she would be alive. And only my son Eric had a real fun two-in-one his 51st, no, not a birthday, a singing lesson and the reality show of an evil twin 51st episode. One time, we as usual, with all our family tribe, unhappily arrived at the voice lesson all the way to Chicago, the funniest and safest city in America where dead go to old. The voice teacher and her evil twin were impatiently waiting for their victims. I felt like the teacher was getting one hour of happiness relief from taking care of her four-year-old impossible evil twin. When I saw the shadow of his evil smile, at the same moment I knew that evil twin prepared for us something evil. <laughs> and yes, I was right. As soon as we entered the studio, the voice teacher said, Hi guys! Yesterday my son played a fun Niagara Fall game with a toilet flush and unfortunately the flush in the bathroom doesn't work and if you need to go, you don't have to go to the gas station. I'm sorry for inconvenience, guys. Oh yes, nice beginning. After two hours of driving, I said to myself, and went this cold and freezing December winter solstice morning to the closest and safest gas station in Chicago that was five miles away from her home. What a nice service we are getting for our money and probably this evil twin celebrating his first win. 
that kind of happy thoughts ran through my head while I was looking for a gas station. My son Eric started his voice warm-up, I returned alive and frozen, started accompanying on the piano, my husband started teaching his aging glorious babysitting, and the little evil twin started jumping, yelling, screaming. When more than half of the lesson gone by, all of a sudden the voice teacher jumped from his seat and yelled, Oh boy! I absolutely forgot! Do you have to become my other twin son from the childcare? I'm 30 minutes early! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh. She quickly grabbed her evil twin along with the car key and prepared to run. And all of a sudden, my son Eric started crying, saying, Mama, Mama, I need to go to the bathroom badly and I will not make it to the gas station. Ooh. The teacher was so upset, rushing downstairs while yelling, Oh no, no, Eric, only don't flush, don't flush. The flush doesn't work and you can do only number one and don't lock the door because the lock this also doesn't work. Eric quickly rushed to the bathroom and locked the door. It takes 21 days to change the habit. And then his loud voice from the bathroom said, Mama, Mama, I have diarrhea. Oh boy, dangerous vapors, what biological weapons slowly but surely climb from the bathroom to the living room. I said to my husband, we shouldn't go today to this smelly lesson. I had a bad feeling before we left. And here we are, a most stupid situation I can't imagine. The teacher and your evil twin left and we looked at each other and stayed still in the someone's house in a stinky living room, waiting for our son to come out of this hazardous bathroom. When five minutes passed by, I yelled, Eric, are you all right? She, Eric, with a sad voice, said, Mama, Mama, it smells here, and I can't open the door. It's luck. Please, help. Oh, no. I looked at my husband and asked him to help to open the bathroom door. He went to the bathroom, pushed a few times, but the door was stubborn as a donkey. We need some tools to open the door, I said. My husband commanded, bring the knife. And how am I going to materialize it? I asked him. He exclaimed, from your purse. I didn't know that I have a knife in my purse, I said. I put it there before going to the super duper pooper evil twin voice lesson, he said. Well, that's a nice surprise. Thank you for not putting in my purse a gun or drugs. I tried to joke while taking a big and sharp knife. I gave it to my husband. And he started working on his favorite activity, breaking the door. Imagine the picture, hmm. entire family in someone's house with a big sharp knife trying to break a bottom door. So much fun, you can't find even in a Disney movie. Oh, and I know, Kim Kardashian would be just jealous of my story. She would definitely make it go viral. I need to give you a call to share my story. Yes, but now let's go back to this stinky reality. Finally, my husband was able to rescue our poor son, Eric, from the stinky bathroom and we all rushed to the car, trying to get ahead of a rush hour and never, and never come back. What did they learn? To get like out in the summer's stinky bathroom wasn't bad after all. Eric told me recently, and he gave me an exciting day and a story to share. And here's my advice to you. If your bathroom 
that happens doesn't work and you're expecting your clients to come over to your house and pay you for your time make sure you fix your luck and get a plumber as soon as possible and don't allow a child to play in a bathroom and fun Niagara Fall game with a toilet flush. And if you ever get in a situation like this, don't despair. Just to take a big, sharp knife. Now let's break it down. I'm sure in this story were moments that made you laugh, though it wasn't funny to me <clears throat> at that time. Tool number one. Heavy punch line at the very end. I gave it to my husband and he started working at his favorite activity. Punch line, pause and punch line, breaking the door. Tool number two, take a pause before your punch line. It will make your joke more prominent, as I said right now. Number three, use layered jokes. It's when your audience started laughing from your first joke and then you give another joke within the next sentence. And then one more joke with one more sentence but when you're doing that, make sure you keep your pauses before each punch line and keep the right timing of your story. Tool number four. If you have several characters in your story, create a voiceover for each character and make it as a dialogue. You build it on a contrast, on contrast. For example, use a high pitch, fast-paced voice for a female and low pitch, slow-paced voice for a male. Tool number five. Bring an animal to your story. Create for your dog or a cat funny lines and insert it in your story. I promise to you, you will get laughs. Tool number six. Tell something unexpected to the audience and you'll get laughs. For example, when I watch TV, I sit on my sofa and drink something friendly to me. Take a pause and then add this punchline at the end. A glass of milk. It will be funny because all people in their heads would think about a glass of wine, but you will say glass of milk that they don't expect to hear. Tool number seven, create your story with different speeds. Depends on the content of your story. If you talk about someone who is running, increase speed of your speech, of your story. If you talk about someone who is sick and tired, came, from, came home from work and found that the house was robbed, lower your voice tone and temporarily slow down the speed of your story to show characters' frustration. Imagine the speed of your story, like waves in the ocean. It can get faster and can get slower, but never use one speed in your story. Tool number eight. Voice is, your voice tone is very important. Monotonous, emotionless voice can be great sleeping for people with insomnia, but can be entertaining and funny. Always watch your voice tone and read your story aloud. The more you read aloud, the more your voice tone will become richer and richer. Tool number one, nine. Add emotion to your face. Remember, whatever emotion you have in your face, the same emotion will immediately translate to your audience. Tool number ten. You must have energy and enthusiasm when you're delivering your story. Those speeches are remembered that have a great amount of energy and emotion. And at last, no, tool number 11. Use props. Use memorable props that fit into your story and will complement it. It's good to use just one prop, but again, when you know the rules, you can break it only if it makes sense. Let's review. Your task is to emotionally involve the audience with your story and make them laugh, cry, and feel each word. Follow each word all the way to the end with you. And you can do that if you can implement those 11 tools that I share, just shared with you. Of course, there are more humor tools, humorous tools, but we will talk about it in another video. And a friendly reminder, if you haven't subscribed yet, you have a chance to do that now. 
and I wish you to stay respectful, kind, positive, happy and loving to yourself and to others. Until next time.